Okay, welcome back. We're going to talk about uh, our first theorem about hyperbolic geometry. It's the it's it's an immediate result based on the characteristic postulate of hyperbolic geometry, and it would pretty much have to be that because it's the only thing that's different. Uh, the characteristic postulate is the only thing that's different about hyperbolic geometry than Euclidean geometry at this point. All we've done is we've swapped the parallel postulate for the characteristic po postulate of hyperbolic geometry. So rather than assuming there's that through a given point C there's uh, that's not on a given line AB that there's exactly one line passing through that point, uh, we're going to assume that there is more than one line that passes through those points that do not intersect the given line AB. And uh, the first thing we, we can prove here is that not only are there at least two uh, such lines, there are going to be infinitely many. And so the idea is that if you look at this line CE and this line CD, and so you're assuming that both of these lines do not intersect the line AB, then what we need to do is consider any line that goes between those two. Um, certainly, it might be reasonable to expect at this point that this line also does not intersect with the line AB. Uh, and we're actually going to prove that. And we're going to prove it by a contradiction. So we're going to suppose that this line here somehow takes a turn and intersects the line AB. So suppose this line intersects the line AB. Okay, so this is some line that's between uh, CE and CD in a certain sense. Now, uh, what's going to happen here is we now have a triangle uh, that has uh, sides of finite length. Consider the triangle CGF. Okay, now this is a right triangle, but that's not particularly important here. But the, the important aspect here is that this is a triangle. Um, and even though we've sort of drawn this line between C and G as a curve, uh, it, it is legitimately a triangle. There's a line CG, there's a line FG, and there's a line CF. And when we're supposing that the line CG actually does intersect with the line AB. So there must be, um, there must be some triangle formed. And so now uh, we're going to look at the line CE. Oops. The line CE enters this triangle at a vertex. And as we've discussed in the previous uh, pencast, um, Pasha's axiom still holds in hyperbolic geometry. And so what Pasha's axiom would suggest here is that the line CE must exit the triangle in the opposite side. Well, if it exits the opposite side, FG, then that means that CE actually intersects the line AB. And this is a contradiction because we were assuming that CE, sorry about that, uh, we were assuming that CE and CD were two lines that did not intersect AB. So this is a contradiction. Sorry about that. Do not intersect the line AB. Okay? And so what we've done here is we've proven theorem 9.1 that says through a given point C, not on a given line AB, there pass an infinite number of lines that do not intersect AB. Okay. So now uh, we're going to introduce two definitions. We're going to divide this infinite uh, number of lines into two classes. One of them is a very special class. It's uh, the parallel lines. And the parallel lines are the, uh, in essence, the first lines in either direction that do not intersect a given line. So if we have a point C and we have a line AB, then there's going to be, an, in essence, a first line on the right-hand side. If we can imagine it by array here. And a first line on the left-hand side that is, we're going to call these parallel lines. And the, the crucial feature of parallel lines is that if you have a line that somehow gets underneath one of these parallel lines, then that line is destined to intersect the line AB. So the parallel lines, uh, there's one on each side, and it's the lowest line. It's the closest a line can get to AB without actually crossing AB. Uh, and, of course, there are lots of other lines in between these. Okay, so if we extend these parallel lines, the left parallel line and the right parallel line, then there are going to be a whole bunch of lines in between that don't intersect. Um, but we want to sort of keep the parallel lines as special 
uh, namely that they have this property that if anything lower uh, passes through point C, then it must intersect. We're going to call the rest of them uh, non-intersecting lines. So all of these in here, non-intersecting lines. Okay. The book also calls them ultra-parallel, and uh, I think non-intersecting is, is perfectly good a perfectly good use, uh, a perfectly good phrase to use. Okay, uh, and then our, our next idea, our next thing that we're going to discuss is this, uh, is what sort of angle can be formed between a parallel line and this segment that connects uh, our point to the line.